Today, I want to continue our sermon series about living authentically. What does that mean? What does that look like? Um, it's important, I believe, for us to understand that God wants us to live in such a way that we are uh, transparent, we are genuine, we are living our lives with uh, purpose, uh, on purpose and with purpose, and just being who he created us to be, made us to be, called us to be, amen, in the earth. And this is in the sermon series on the come up. And this is message two uh, in that sermon series. And to live authentically, it means that to, is to have an authentic lifestyle, lifestyle that uh, enables us to be honest, um, transparent, and genuine individuals who will positively impact and change the world around us. And, you know, uh, as I prayed about the series and prayed about the message and what I want to articulate, what I believe God wants me to articulate with you, and I just began to ask God just why the struggle? Why is it so hard to live authentically? Why is it so difficult for us to live authentically in the world? And um, we're going to get into that. And this series will, will attempt to lead you down the path of what the Bible refers to and what theologically we refer to as sanctification. And that's where the process for those who are believers, that's where the process of the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life because none of us are perfect. And understanding that, appreciating that, valuing that, uh, we understand that we're works under construction, that we are in process. All of us are evolving. All of us are being worked on by the Holy Spirit, uh, with the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so that's what this message is about. That's what this sermon series is about, is helping you to navigate through the process of sanctification to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can live authentically in the world. Uh, the Bible says that truth has fallen down. Uh, Isaiah 59, I believe, that truth has fallen down in the streets and no one, no one is picking it up. No one is, is bothering about it, but that should not be found among us. Amen. As believers. Amen. I'm not talking to the world right now. I'm talking to we who are believers, we who profess a faith in Jesus Christ, we who profess a faith in God, and we have a biblical worldview that there is one God, hallelujah, one faith, one Lord, one baptism, and one Holy Spirit, and, and one God who's above us all, in us all, and works through us all. If that is your biblical worldview, if that is your worldview, then I'm talking to you, amen? And I just want to be very clear about that because I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I simply just want to teach the truth today. And uh, as I talk to you as believers today, and then to those who may be watching who are unbelievers, I pray that the message I share today with you will inspire you, will encourage you to think about your life and think about who God is and think about becoming a believer in Jesus Christ and begin to live the life that God wants you to live in the earth. Amen. And so uh, the sermon series is entitled On the Come Up. And we're going to deal with it in, in parts, amen. So each week I will share another part, amen. And so it's on the come up, living authentically. And each week I will share a different part with you and different revelations that God gives me as it relates to it. So now you know uh, uh, we didn't get to pray, so let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Father, for those who are watching I thank you, Father, for those who are viewing, no matter what time they're viewing this, Lord God. I pray that the same spirit that's with me, hallelujah, because you're omnipresent, is with them. Amen. The same spirit that's with me now, giving me inspiration to share this message. Amen. It's with them to understand the message. I pray because you said in your word, let in all of our getting to get understanding. So I pray, Lord, that all of us will receive understanding, that we will receive the principles, pertinent principles that are practical to everyday life so that we can apply it, Lord God. And I pray in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit will move in our lives, hallelujah, and continue to do that good work that you started in us 
Hallelujah. And that you planned for us from the beginning. Now, your word is not going to come back to your void. It's going to accomplish everything you want it to. I already know that by faith. So I agree with it. I confess it. Your word shall not come back to you void. It shall accomplish everything you want it to. It's going to prosper us in the area you intended it to. And you will get the glory. We pray today that an unbeliever will be saved. We pray today that believers, hallelujah, will be encouraged, amen, to live the life that God has called them to live, amen, and to live, hallelujah, on the come up, to live authentically in Jesus' name. It is so, and so it is, amen. Now, on the come up, I borrowed this uh, from the uh, book entitled On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, amen, and she is the author of uh, The Hate You Give and that movie that uh, came out a few years ago. And now, um, On the Come Up is a movie that's going to be, it, that is processed, and the process is being made now. And uh, so stay tuned for that. So On the Come Up is about a young girl who's 16 years old. She wants to be a rapper, and her father was a rapper, and she wants to be a rapper, kind of following in his footsteps, but she still wants to be her unique self. And uh, it deals with her controversies. It's a, a young adult novel. And it deals with the controversies and the adversity that she went through in order to uh, achieve what she wanted to achieve and to fulfill the dream that she had for her life. So, you know, when I begin to read the story, uh, read the book, I begin to look for, in my perspective, and look through the lens of God. Uh, and, and, and where's the theos? Where is God in this? Where is God's presence? Where is God's glory in this? And so it is from that along with, you know, most importantly, the study of God's word that we're going to talk about on the come up, because I believe each and every last one of us are on the come up. I believe, like the Apostle Paul said, that none of us can say that we have arrived. None of us can say that we have attained. None of us can say that we are perfect. Amen. But we all can say, glory be to God, that we are going after that high calling. Amen. That's what the Bible says in the book of Philippians, that we're Philippians chapter three. And that's probably going to be one of the messages about how we're all striving to go after that thing that God has called us to, to go after, to pursue. Amen. And so uh, now the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 1, 9, that, that praise God. And I want to read it to you like uh, like it says, amen. The Bible says that what has been, Ecclesiastes 1, 9, it says that what that which has been is what will be, and that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. Now, I believe the Bible like you believe the Bible. I believe that there's nothing new under the sun, but hallelujah, that does not mean that all of us have seen everything. Glory to God. So I'm saying to you right now, while I understand and totally agree, hallelujah, and believe that there's nothing new under the sun, glory be to God, I still want to echo out and see if I can get somebody to shout back at me today, hallelujah. There are some things that are brand new to me, amen. There are things that I know God has said in his word will happen, but I never thought I would see them happen in my lifetime. But lo and behold, I'm now seeing them happen in my lifetime, I'm seeing the things that God said would happen in the in the word. He said it would happen in this world. He said that as time draws near for the second return of Christ, he said, because no one knows the day nor the hour. But he says, and, and I'm sharing this with you because I want to reaffirm all of you and to secure you and encourage you, amen, in your security. Because God has said in his word that, that, that as time grows near, that we're living in perilous times and that, you know, men are going to become lovers of themselves. Selfishness will abound. Lawlessness will abound. Uh, crazy things will happen. The spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. We're going to see things that are so counter Christ in the world that is going to cause you to pause and wonder. Hallelujah. And but God said, don't be don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Glory be to God. He said these things have to happen. They got to come to pass. And so saints of God, be encouraged. Amen. You who are believers, be encouraged today, because that means if those portions of the word of God is coming to pass, which we're seeing wars and rumors of wars and all of this craziness, then also be assured in your spirit today that if that's coming to pass, why can't we believe, hallelujah, that the other things that God has promised is coming to pass, amen, that they will manifest in Jesus' name, that the very thing that God has spoken over your life will manifest, amen, that you will get to your 
promised land, quote unquote, that you will arrive at your destiny, amen, and that you will fulfill the things that he has started in you and that he who has begun a good work in you will fa is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So like all of these other things that are happening, the wars and rumors of wars, the lawlessness, the, 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 the havoc that's being wreaked and chaos that's in the world, God is saying to you and I, glory be to God, that also I'm working on you. Amen. I'm work Philippians 1 6. I'm working on you. Hallelujah. School cool, glory. Paul said, I am confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So I want to declare unto you, you're on the come up. Live authentically. Amen. You're on the come up. Live authentically. So let's get into this. Amen. Now, on the come up is where you are understanding that you've been uh, called to do something. First of all, called to be. Hallelujah. And also called to do, called to be and called to do. And so that you and I are always in the process of what I call being and becoming. It's what I, I reference this because we are called to be, to be whoever God has called us to be. And so we have to be that. Amen. And then we're still in the process of becoming. Amen. And as we go from level, you know, life is lived on many levels, but we arrive in stages. Life is lived on levels. But we arrive in stages. So we're in the process. While you're on the level you are, you have to be. You have to be the, on that level. And then as you mature, hallelujah, you arrive in stages. So you got to own your process. So on the come up is about you owning your story, owning your process, owning the work that God is doing in your life. And that you can declare that some, you're on the verge of something. Glory to God. It has not completely, totally manifested itself yet. And it will not until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. It will not manifest itself in the fullness and the totality of it. But hallelujah, you're in process. You're on the come up. I'm trying to encourage you today in Jesus name to say that I'm going to live authentically because I am on the come up. I'm in process. Amen. So that's what that means. And, and that's how we're applying it today. Now, I asked the Lord today, he and I, you know, just, just praying, and, and am I saying to the, Lord, to the Lord, what makes it so difficult to live authentically? What makes it so difficult to live authentically? Why are we challenged to live authentically? And here is what God and I, what the Spirit of the Lord gave me, amen? He says, he says, share this with my people. Now, beloved, you know Genesis 126, and if you don't know what Genesis 126 says, that's where uh, the Bible says that God said, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. So what that means is, is that he created the first man. Again, your worldview, what your worldview is. And if your worldview is where you believe in uh, the uh, creation narrative of the Bible, amen, and not evolution or Big Bang theory, but you believe in the creation narrative of the Bible, if that's your worldview, then you understand that God being Elohim, the Hebrew word, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity of God, that God uh, three in one, they said, let us make man after our own image and let us fashion him after our likeness. And so what that means is, is that we're not physically made look, to look like God, but we have the qualities and the characteristics of God-like, amen, that we are God-like in character. Praise God, that we're God-like. Uh, in the characteristics. So we have the same of creative genius that God has. We have the potential to create. We have the potential to become. Hallelujah. We have the potential to change things as because we've been made in the image of God and in his likeness. We have the potential and the capacity to love, the capacity to forgive, the capacity to be in relationships, the capacity to create things out of nothing. We have that capacity Hallelujah. And to do the things that the Holy Spirit is trying to do in our lives, we all have that capacity. Every person, hallelujah, has that capacity because that was originally made. And that's the God part. If we understand and subscribe to the thought that in the, the uh, ideology that man is three parts, spirit, soul, and body, then the spirit part, that's the part that God talks about in Genesis 126. And that's the part that God says to Jeremiah, hallelujah, before... Uh, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you. Amen. So, beloved, I need you to understand that the part of you that God 
uh, fashioned a man is your spirit man. And then the Bible goes on to say in Genesis 2 that he brew into man the breath of life and the nostrils of man the breath of life and man became a living being or a living soul. Amen. And so your spirit and your soul and your earth suit, your flesh, that's just who God has housed you in. And there's only one race and it's the human race. And the God puts you in that human race, in the human race, and he puts your spirit and your soul inside of a body. Amen. Now that's the biblical worldview. And if you subscribe to that as a Christian, then what I'm sharing with you is very familiar. But here is where, here is where things, uh, Get diff here's where things become challenging, and here is where I want to challenge you to stretch yourself, hallelujah, and to open yourself up to further revelation of God as to why it's difficult or challenging, hallelujah, to live authentically in a fallen world. Now, you know what happened in Genesis, uh, what's recorded in Genesis 3 and Genesis 4, and we know that though uh, we have these chapters. It does not mean that it was like the next day that things happened. Over a period of time, these things took place. And then they're recorded chronologically in the word of the Lord. And so in God's word. And so things may happen. You may see them listed, uh, this verse, this Bible. I mean, this chap, this book of the Bible of this verse. But it does not mean it happened in that sequential order. So I need you to understand that there are things that we can understand as we read the word of God and rightly divide it. So now the Genesis chapter five, I said all that to get us here. Amen. That's the context. Genesis chapter five, verses one through five, reading from the message version. And again, the question that I'm dealing with right now is why is it so hard to live authentically? Why it's so hard? Why is it so hard to live authentically? The Bible says in Genesis 5, 1 through 5 in the message version, it says this. This is the family tree of the human race. When God created the human race, he made it God-like with a nature akin to God. Hallelujah. So today you have a nature akin to God when he made, when he created Adam. Adam and Eve had a nature akin to God. So when God created Adam, the first man, hallelujah, Adam's nature was akin to God. I need you to understand. Glory be to God. And then uh, he created both male and female. Hallelujah. Eve came woman, came out of the womb of man. And so here we understand that God created both male and female. That's what God created. Hallelujah. That's the species that God created. And he made that species with God-like characteristics and a God-like nature. Amen. Now, this was the first man and the first woman, all right? And this was, and they represented the whole human race. Yes, they did. Now, verses three through five goes on to say, when Adam was 130 years old, he had a son who was just like him. Now, there is the shift. I want you to see it. It's, it's right there in the Bible, and it explains itself. So Adam and Eve, when they first had children, I mean, Adam and when they were first created, they were made with the God-like nature of God. All right. But then we know, hallelujah, the fall occurred. They they ate from the forbidden fruit. They ate from the tree uh, 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 of good and evil, of knowledge of good and evil, which God forbade them to eat from. And then God placed them outside of the garden so they would not eat from the tree of life that would give them eternal life stuck in that state. Which state? The state that they had now entered into that state of being forever uh, fallen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need you to get that. Because had they eaten from that tree that would have given them eternal life, hallelujah, it would have, watch, watch this, placed them in that state forever. So God places them out, not to punish them, but it is a consequence of their disobedience and of their actions. And because they chose what they chose, now God has to do something to protect them in Jesus name so that they will not remain in this state uh, forever. And that's what God did. Now, this is why the Bible says, beloved, watch this and listen very closely. This is why the Bible says when Adam was 130 years old, he had a son who was just like him. Meaning this, it means that now, hallelujah, that nature that the God like nature was now compromised. Come on, say that with me compromise. 
the godlike nature was now compromised because now every child born to Adam and Eve after their fall, after their disobedience, now takes on the sinful nature, the fallen nature, the compromised nature, the corrupt nature. And that, beloved, is where we are today. In Jesus' name, I need you to understand this because this is why I believe it's so difficult to live authentically in this fallen world because we have taken on and everyone subsequently born after the fall has now been born in a compromised state. This is why David would say, and we're going to get to it later in this message, this is why David would say in uh, Psalm 51, I was uh, born in sin and shaping in iniquity. I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity because he understands that the state that he was now born into was a state that had been compromised. Saints of God, that means that you and I, when we were born, hallelujah, through our parents, through the DNA of our parents, which is a compromised DNA. Now, your spirit man still has the nature of God. And that's what Jesus Christ came to restore. Glory be to God. We're going to get through that because you're what? You're on the come up. God wants you to live authentically. We're not going to get to it today, but throughout this series for the next two months, we're going to get to that. Why we needed to be born again. That's the setup. Glory be to God, because that nature that God, the God-like nature is there, but it had been compromised Watch this, not the God-like nature, but your, 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 your flesh had been compromised by the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And we're going to talk about that in Romans 8. It talks about that. Through one man's disobedience, sin, and everything attached to sin, death, sickness, disease, all those different things attached to it that are not of God, that are worldly and that are not good, was born and released into the earth. Not born, but was released into the earth. And that's why it's so difficult. And so watch this. So it says that he had, going back to the Genesis passage, he had a son who was just like him, his very spirit and image, and he named him Seth. So what is God saying to us? God is saying to us, beloved, he is saying to you and I, the saints of God, he needs us to understand this with this teaching right here. In the likeness of God, man is now a fallen being. But these words are repeated to show that the divine likeness was not therefore lost, nor the uh, blessing bestowed on creation was revoked. So when God blessed Adam and Eve, hallelujah, and told them to be fruitful and multiply, when God created them and he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness, that wasn't revoked. That wasn't lost, but it was compromised. I'm going to say it again. It wasn't revoked. It wasn't taken back. Hallelujah. It wasn't lost. Hallelujah. You know, that the book Paradise Lost, you know. Hallelujah. Yeah, they may have lost paradise. They may have lost their positional, uh, their, their geographical location, which they were living in, but they did not lose. Glory be to God. Nor was it revoked or taken back from them the likeness of God. Hallelujah. The blessing of God. That was not taken back. Glory be to God in Jesus name, because there is grace even in the consequences. God is still dealing with humanity through grace. Grace was back there then. Amen. Because that's the love of God, the unmerited favor of God, the unmerited love of God moving on behalf of fallen man. That's what drove God to go look for Adam and ask Adam, where art thou? And ask Eve, what did she do? That's the grace of God moving. Hallelujah. Because he does not want us to stay lost. Hallelujah. He does not want he does not want to feel want us to feel that we cannot uh, be that we are not loved and that he has abandoned us because Adam and Eve fell. And I want to encourage you today in Jesus name. Hallelujah. You and I are on the come up. We're to live authentically. But there are times as we go through life. Glory be to God that as we go through life. Hallelujah. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to sin. We're going to do things wrong. We're going to do things that are not pleasing to God. But that does not mean that God is going to abandon you. That doesn't mean that God is going to forsake you. That does not mean that God is going to revoke. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 the blessing of that he placed on your life. That does not mean that God is going to change his mind about you. Glory be to God. I want you to understand in Jesus name that when we look at this Genesis passage, hallelujah, the great gift of the of power of God 
that was deposited in you is still there. Come on, sites. Hallelujah. Confess with me. Say it's still there. Tell somebody I got a treasure inside of me. Glory to be God. I got potential in me. Hallelujah. I got God like inside of me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now it's hard to believe this and it's hard to understand this, but it is true. And this is why it's hard to be and live authentically because we live in a fallen world. Hallelujah. And we live inside fallen flesh. And we have all the pressures that come with that, that are placed upon our flesh, that's trying to uh, squash out, hallelujah, and drive out the God nature that's inside of you or overtake it because it has been compromised. But glory be to God, how many of you can testify? It won't work. Glory be to God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Come on, say that. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Though it's been compromised through Christ. I can overcome the world through faith. This is that that overcomes the world, even your faith. Your faith in who? Your faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it's Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. So you're going to need a new identity. You're going to need to be reborn. Hallelujah. I'm going to get to that in this series, but not today. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then another reason why, and so the first reason, the first understanding that I have of why this happened and why it's so hard to live authentically is because of the fallen nature that 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 now man is born into. And this is why, saints of God, it should be easy for you to understand why people can say, I was born this way. Or, you know, you have, each one of you, Hallelujah. And me included. We have proclivities. We have bents. You know, we got proclivities. We got issues that we're working on. Every last one of us. Hallelujah. You got an issue that you're working on in your life. Hallelujah. That you need God to work on in your life. Yes, you do. And the Holy Spirit is working on you. Glory be to God. He's working to transform you. Hallelujah. From the inside out. And that's what living authentically is all about. So come on. Hallelujah. Let's go further in this. Another reason why I believe it's difficult to live authentically. Hallelujah. But you're still on the come up. But it's challenging to live authentically is because according to Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible says, for as a person thinks in his heart, in his or her heart, so is he or she. Hallelujah. So as a person thinks in his heart, so are they. So as you think, so here it is, faulty thinking, faulty thinking, faulty thinking contributes to the difficulty to live authentically in a fallen world. What has been passed on to us, what we have been introduced to our socialization, that has created a process of thinking. And this is why, praise God, that when you become born again, you have to constantly renew your mind or change your thinking. This is why Jesus Christ said, when he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repent, change your thinking, change your mind. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I need you to understand it is a process, but I want you to understand why it's difficult for you and I to live authentically in this fallen world, but there's not impossible. It's difficult, but not impossible because I'm here to tell you greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So no matter how much pressure that is placed upon you right now that you're experiencing right now that's preventing you or challenging you, hallelujah, to live authentically, I'm here to tell you the greater one, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, God in you is greater in Jesus name. Go on and say say it after me. Hallelujah. Put it in the chat. It's greater. Amen. He's greater. Hallelujah. God is greater. Hallelujah. The Jesus is greater. The Holy Spirit is greater. Amen. But it's difficult to live authentically when your thinking is faulty. When your thinking is polluted, when you have what I call stinking thinking, when you have that thinking that is polluted and contaminated and compromised by the ways of the world and by the influences that are of the world and what they're trying to do. And that construct, even in some of our educational systems, if you do not carefully examine them, they will, beloved, pollute your thinking and corrupt your thinking and compromise your thinking. And saints of God, that's why it starts at home. I must say it again. That's why it starts at home. Home. Hallelujah. Because you have to understand that there are certain things that have been passed down. We call them, the Bible called them 
generational curses, amen, but they're generational transfers. And still today, as a believer, amen, glory be God, the curse has been broken. You're delivered from every curse because curse, hallelujah, is everyone that dies on a tree. So when Jesus Christ died on that tree, he took the curse away. The power, hallelujah, for that curse that's on your family, that's in your life, has been broken because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. The curse, the power of it to control your life and your children's life and your children's children's life has been broken. But we got to learn to walk in the freedom. Hallelujah. We got to learn to walk in the sanctification. Hallelujah. We got to learn to walk in the process. Hallelujah. Of our transformation from the inside out. So we no longer live under faulty, compromised, polluted, contaminated thinking. You must renew your mind. You must Change the way you think. You've got to be born again. He told Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, How can I, you know, how come this happened? He said, This is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. And what's impossible with man is possible with God. God can change your life. God can help you through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that's at work in your life right now. You can be born again. You can overcome the world. You can be more than a conqueror. You can get from up under the compromise, glory be to God, I'm going to decree it right now, that compromise, faulty thinking is broken. Glory be to God. You must enter into this process of transformation, this process of sanctification, where the Holy Spirit is working in your life. You must work with him. Now, the Holy Spirit is not like this ghost where you ought to be intimidated or frightened of him. You know, you know, Casper, the ghost, all that kind of stuff. no. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. It is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. It is the living God. It is the Spirit of the living God living inside of you as a believer. And he loves you. He is the God. Hallelujah. That guides you into all truth. He is the counselor. He is the comforter. He is the God. He is the standby. He is the stand up. Amen. He is the one that's inside of you right now that's leading and guiding you to be, hallelujah, to tune into this message. Hallelujah. To get what God is doing. He is the teacher. He is the one. I'm just being used by God. The Holy Spirit is the one that's teaching you. Glory to God. He's the one that's implanting in you. Glory to God and connecting you spirit to spirit. Come on, declare that. Hallelujah. Spirit to spirit. You need to understand you're getting ready to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Glory be to God because the spirit is communicating with your spirit and your spirit man is receiving this. Your spirit man that has been quickened by the Holy Spirit is alive. Hallelujah. And now alert and attentive and open and receptive to the things that God is saying. You're hearing the message behind the message. Glory be to God that God is in your life. I'm decreeing it right now. You're on the come up. Hallelujah. You're going to live authentically. I decree it in Jesus name. God says I can decree a thing and it shall happen and the glory of the Lord shall shine on our way and if you receive it today, hallelujah, declare in your own house, wherever you may be, I receive it in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Believe God and you shall be established. Obey the prophet, and you shall prosper. I'm telling you right now, hallelujah, no hype, hallelujah, only hope in Jesus' name, that there is hope for you, like there's hope for me, there's hope for everybody in the world, hallelujah, if they will become a believer in Jesus Christ, there is hope, God wants you to live authentically, God wants you to know that you're on the come up. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay where you are. Glory be to God. And I move to my first, my, my last point. Amen. So why is it difficult as we move there? Why is it difficult to live authentically? Two things. Number one, we live in a fallen world and we live in a compromised, contained, uh, a compromised state because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. We now are born after the image or after the likeness of our parents. Yeah, you're born after the likeness of your parents. You're born after the nature of your parents. Hallelujah. The God nature is still there, but you're born in flesh in a fallen world, which has bits. Glory be to God. Now listen to this. And then the second reason why it's difficult to live, um, why it's challenging to live authentically in a fallen world is because of faulty, polluted compromise thinking. Now, the last point for today, living authentically requires truth from the inside out. Living authentically requires truth from the inside out. Amen. Hallelujah. Declare this. I'm on the come up. Glory be to God. Now, turn with me now to the book of Psalms. Psalm, uh, Psalm 51. Hallelujah. 
And let's go to Psalm 51 and let's look at verses four through six in the message version of the Bible. It says this, you're the one. This is David talking. This is David talking to God after he had sinned with Bathsheba. He committed adultery. He had sinned fornication. He sinned that sin and then murder. He, he, he didn't personally murder someone, but he sent uh, Bathsheba's husband out to on the front line and he was murdered in that battle. He, he, he was an accessory to it. <laughs> Glory be to God. So David, a man after God's own heart, watch this, was struggling to live authentically because though he was after God's own heart, watch this, he was still born, yes he was, with a compromised nature like you and like me. Beloved, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, glory to God, what am I saying? I'm, I, don't condemn yourself. That's the devil's job. And that's what he's trying to do. Yes, if you have sin, confess that sin and receive the forgiveness of God. Go to the person that you've sinned against and, and make that thing right. Amen. Or at least ask for forgiveness. Amen. Understand and then understand that when we do sin, there are consequences for our sin. But what God wants, watch this, he wants godly sorrow that leads to repentance, that leads to change. That's the sorrow that God wants. And this is what we have in Psalm 51. We have David being convicted after the man of God, Nathan, comes to him and tells him the story and says to him, you're that man. And I can say that to all of us today. I can say it to myself. I can look in the mirror and say to myself, I'm that man. I'm that man what? I'm that man that sinned. I'm that man that missed the mark. I'm that man that didn't get it right. I'm that man that is compromised and striving to and struggling, not str struggling to live authentically. I'm that man. And out of that conviction, I now speak to you today out of the conviction of my own life and out of the conviction that David experienced, which is just a type of all of us. All of us ought to be convicted. When we fall short, when we miss the mark, the Holy Spirit is not there to condemn us. John 3, 17, right? God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent in the son in this world. He sent his son into the world to save the world. Hallelujah. For God, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn you but that the world through him might be saved. That's what this is about. That's what I'm trying to sh share with you today. You can be saved. You are saved. And what God wants to do, not condemn you, not make you feel bad, but he wants you to know that he has not forgotten you and that he has not given up on you. He has not forsaken you, but he wants, watch this, for you to live authentically. He wants you to come clean with him and with yourself. So this is where we pick up with David in Psalm 51, verses 4 and 6. He says, and he's talking to God. He says, you're the one I violated. And you've seen it all, God. You've seen the full extent of my evil. You have all the facts before you. Whatever you decide to do, whatever you decide about me is fair. David, David, you just got to have, come clean. David said, listen, whatever you decide to do, you got all the facts. You know it all. And whatever you decide to do, glory be to God. It's fair. He says, I've been out of step with you for a long time. How many of you can raise your hand and say, yeah, there are times that that fits me. I get out of step with God. I get out of step with the rhythm of God, the rhythm of God's grace. Yes, we do. There are times where we get out of step with the rhythm of God's grace. And sometimes we can be in that state for a long period of time where we're just doing things our way. And we call it, you know, living our truth but you're really out of step with God. You're not living on God's terms. You're living life on your terms and the way you want to live them. This is not to make you feel bad. This is only to bring about conviction in our spirit so that we can own up and fess up with God because God, to live authentically, requires truth from the inside out. So he says, I've been out of step with you for a long time. He says, in the wrong sense, before I was born, I've been in the wrong since before I was born. I've been in the wrong since before I was born. That's that fallen nature. So born with the bent, born with compromise. Glory be to God. Susceptible 
to the tricks of the enemy, susceptible to the lies of the enemy, susceptible to big lies and small lies, susceptible to all of the darkness of the world, susceptible, susceptible to the influences of the world, susceptible to those things that are in your DNA, susceptible to those things, no matter how much people try to nurture you and change you, there are certain things in your DNA that you're susceptible to. In Jesus' name, you got, hallelujah, you got the bends. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, or what I call the bits. Amen. You have proclivities that you're susceptible to now. Saints of God, glory to God. But God says in his word, listen to what, what David says. So David says, I've been out of step with you for a long time. He says, in the wrong sense, before I was born, what you're after, God, is truth from the inside out. He says, God, what you want is truth from the inside out. God is not trying for you to get perfection. He's not trying. He understands you cannot live flawlessly, but he wants you to be truthful, live authentically. And in order to live authentically, what he's after is truth from the inside out because you cannot live outwardly authentically. You can't show up and be who God created you to be, called you to be, hallelujah, if you're not truthful on the inside. It's impossible. We're wearing masks. Hallelujah. We're pretending we're faking it. And there are people that are phony, even in the body of Christ. And now I'm exposing that lie. I'm exposing the work of the enemy. You don't have to wear that bash. You don't have to be fake. You don't have to be phony. Glory be to God, because we're exposing that. Hallelujah. For the lie that it is and that God wants to bring you out. And how does, how does God do this? Watch this. So David said, what you're after, God, is true from the inside out. So therefore, he says, enter me. Then conceive a new and true life. Glory be to God. David says, enter me. Glory be to God. Glory be, enter me, God. Go there, God. Invite God in. How is God going to enter you? Vis-a-vis -vis the Holy Spirit. How is God in you now, believer? Vis-a-vis -vis the Holy Spirit. The presence of God. The triune God is in you now because of the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer. And so David says, enter me. And if you're an unbeliever, you can pray that prayer right now. Enter me, God, and he will come in. And when he comes in, David said, when you get in there, God, glory be to God, when you enter me, I give you permission, glory to God, because God is giving you free will, beloved. He's not going to violate that. He's not going to overtake your will. He's not going to override your choices. He's not going to override your decision. You have to invite him in. You have to want him in. You have to ask him in. Hallelujah. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock the door of your heart and I'm knocking. And if any man would open up to me, if any man would uh, receive me, he says, I'll come in and sup with him. I'll come in and be with him. Glory be to God. And God is saying this. And David is saying that he says, enter me, God. And when you enter me, perform, hallelujah, spiritual, hallelujah, spiritual intercourse, perform inside of me. Hallelujah. Do that supernatural thing that only you can do. Hallelujah. Create a new true life. Help me, God, to live authentically. And beloved, this is where I end today. God wants to help you live authentically. But you have to ask him, enter me and create in me. You have to cooperate with the entering, with the work of the Holy Spirit. And you have to respond. This is God's grace right here. He wants to enter into you. He wants truth. He wants you to live authentically. But in order to do that, you have to have truth on the inside. And how do you get that? I'm glad you asked. You ask God, the Father, to enter you. You ask Jesus Christ, the Savior, to enter you. You ask the Holy Spirit to enter you. And he'll do it. And they'll come in. Yes, they will. And they'll make their home in you. The Bible declares that I don't have time to talk about it, But they'll come in and make their home in you. And they're coming in and they're going to change some things. Yes, they are. They're going to help you get rid of help you get rid of the toxicity in your life, the contamination, the pollution, the things that have compromised your character. They're going to help. It's a work. It's a process. But it's your process that is absolutely necessary for you to become authentic so that you can live authentically. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you today for these who have listened. 
I thank you today for those who are now crying out to you because they want to live authentically. They're screaming. They want to show up as their true selves. They don't want to wear a mask anymore. They don't want to pretend and they don't want to be fake and they don't want to be phony. They want to be genuine. So, Lord, hear our cry. And I pray for every one of us that you would enter into us and create in us new and true life your truth, who we are called to be and what we're called to do so that we can live authentically in the earth. In Jesus' name, it is so. And so it is. Well, listen, beloved, I had a pleasure sharing this word with you. I pray that it's added value to your life. And if so, glory be to God, I want you to do two things for me. Hallelujah. Share it with someone else. Just do that. Share it with someone else. Hallelujah. Who glory. If you want to become a partner, become a partner. You know, be saved. Hallelujah. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Become a partner. But then share it with someone else because you know there are many out there struggling in this area to live authentically. But you help me get the message out. Will you become a witness for Christ? And get the message out there that we can live authentically, even in a fallen world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, to the coming weeks, because we're going to continue to unpack this and study it together. I want to grow with you together so that at the end of September, we all are living authentically. But you're not going to have to wait till then. Glory to God. Each week, after each deposit, glory be to God. We're peeling off one layer and another layer. So glory be to God. I pray today that we've peeled off a layer and there's more, more the genuine person that God created you to be and called you to be will become, will come forth. God bless you. We love you. I love you. Until next week, God bless you.